Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Reno and in today's video I have three gameplays for you in the tier 9 mercenary heavy tank, the hard case, and this is an absolute beast of a heavy tank with really really stupid armour and I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about how to play the hard case and how to take it out on the battlefield because this thing can be really frustrating if you don't know where to shoot it. So I have three gameplays for you, like I have said. I'm also going to tell you my commander and equipment setup should you wish to play the tank as I have done in the three gameplays in the background. I'm going to give you a weak spot guide as well and I'll be talking you through how to get the most out of this tank and how I like to angle it up on the battlefield. But first, what is the hard case? So as a mercenary tank, it is a mismatch of other tanks in World of Tanks console. The hard case has the turret of the Chinese tier 10 heavy tank, the 113. It has the hull of the tier 9 Soviet heavy tank, the T10. And it has the gun and the engine of the tier 9 Soviet medium tank, the T54. So before we get on to talk about the armor and the effective sort of a penetration that you need to get through all of that space armor you can see around the sides of the turret and the hull, I'll talk to you a little bit about the stats of the hard case. So the hard case has a 100mm gun which is on the T54. This 100mm gun has 320 alpha damage on its standard and premium rounds and 420 on its HE rounds. The penetration for those rounds are 219 on the standard, 330 millimeters of heat penetration on the premium ammunition and 50 millimeters on the HE. So very low standard penetration, carry plenty of heat ammunition if you wanna be competitive when you come up against those super heavy tanks um, at tiers nine and 10. The gun handling isn't too bad at all because it's a medium tank gun. It's 2.3 second base aim time and a 0.35 accuracy, which you can get down to a pretty good level with a good commander and equipment loadout. And I'll be telling you mine in just a little bit. You have seven degrees of gun depression, which is quite flexible for a tank with such good armor. And you have 18 degrees of gun elevation, which can be pretty handy and it isn't awful at all. In terms of its DPM, it is quite low at 2064, but that's to be expected with a heavy tank that can bounce shots directly off its side armor. In terms of its view range, it's good news at 400 meters view range, so you can spot for yourself, especially if you choose to use the advanced optics as a piece of your equipment. You have 1850 hit points as a heavy tank, which isn't too bad at tier nine. The only downside is the mobility, which is to be expected with all of this spaced armor protection on the sides of the hull and the turret. You can only go at 38 kilometers an hour forwards and 13 kilometers an hour backwards, and your horsepower to ton is 11.87, which is absolutely god awful. So you might want to think about improving at least the traverse speeds with your commander skills, and I'll be telling you in just a second how I have done that. In terms of its traverse speeds then, it's 27 degrees a second on the hull and 24 degrees a second on the turret, so it is very slow and cumbersome. But your main goal is going to be getting into a position, defending it, and just brawling it out with the heavy tanks. So now we get on to the kind of fun bit or the crazy bit of the hard case, and that is the armor. So as it has the 113's turret, it has 290 millimeters of frontal turret armor, so extremely strong. It is slightly rounded as well, and only really high penetration rounds will go through that. And I'll tell you the penetration you need in just a little bit, but it's an extremely strong frontal turret armor. In terms of its cupolas, you have two cupolas, one which is 160 millimeters thick and one which is 140 millimeters thick. The frontal hull is 120 millimeters thick. The actual side armor is 80 millimeters, but you have one 20 millimeter space armor plate, one 30 millimeter space armor plate on these sides of the turret and the hull. You have one 20 millimeter space armor plate on the actual back of the hull of this tank and also one uh, 25 millimeter space armor on the back of this tank as well, which is just absolutely insane. It's just layers of spaced armor on pretty solid heavy tank armor underneath. So you can imagine that this thing can bounce a lot of rounds and you'll be seeing that throughout this gameplay. So what are the weak points of the hard case then? Well, the weak points of the hard case are the hole if you have enough penetration. And I'll just be a few seconds before I tell you that you can go through the cupolas from the front and 
also the back of the turret if you get behind this tank or if it turns its turret and you have shots into the back of the turret where there isn't any spaced armor and from the side you're going to have to shoot the 120 millimeter bar above the spaced armor or the front drive wheel where the spaced armor ends and that's how you take down the hard case so how much penetration do you need to get through all of these plates of armor well to get through the lower plate you're going to need 180 millimeters of penetration to get through if it's not angled and about 230 millimeters of effective penetration if it's angling at a 40 to 45 degree angle if you're trying to go through the upper hole or the pipe nose it's 180 millimeters of effective penetration if it's uh, angled at sort of 40 degrees and it's closest to you but if you're looking at this thing dead on you're going to need about 240 millimeters to go through the frontal hull armor reliably as we casually bounce the t30 around from the side yep yeah, that's the kind of hard case thing um if you want to go through the cupolas, you're going to need about 200 to 220 millimeters of effective penetration if you want to go through them reliably and they aren't exactly the easiest target to hit especially if it's using the full extent of its gun depression and you can also go through the front of this turret only if you have extremely high penetration heat rounds and i would suggest sort of 340 millimeters plus so there's not too many tanks that have that kind of crazy heat penetration but the yak panzer e100 would be a good choice in that regard so in terms of my command and equipment setup then, what do I run on the hard case? Well in terms of my equipment I run advanced optics, advanced loader and gun stabilizer. And in terms of my commander I run six sets, spawn leader, uh, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot, off-road driving, clutch braking and situational awareness. I boosted my view range a little bit more with the situational awareness, off-road driving and clutch braking to help the traverse speeds and at least try and get my spaced arm around whoever's shooting me and the rest is gun handling perks and rapid loading to improve my DPM. If you choose to run that setup that I have chosen to run in these gameplays then you're looking at getting a DPM of 2768 which is quite respectable for a tank with such good armour, a 512 meters view range, a 2.13 second aim time and a 0.23 accuracy. So I found out that, that this works really really well for this tank and I've been having um, a lot of fun just bouncing shots sitting side on and that's better than sitting uh, straight onto your opponents. It's kind of like a crab, you just move sidewards across the battlefield, reverse side scrape, side scrape, and hope that your enemies don't know your weak spots. Um, so we're coming to the end of the first gameplay here on Siegfried Line. It's nothing spectacular, but it does show you the power of just um, brawling it out, slugging it out with your opponents, the kind of influence that you can have sat on a corner, um, defending a corner and that kind of thing. You see here, whenever something's looking at me, I'm just wiggling backwards and forwards, over angling, exposing my side and hoping um, the tank fires at me, but that Type 5 Heavy has given up as he gets taken out by our friendly Type 5, and that's it for that first game where we finish in the MVP slot with 5 kills, 4.3k direct damage, 631 assistance. We get the mastery badge, uh, 1893 base experience and 4300 blocked. I fired a lot of heat in that game so I did lose quite a lot of silver and if you want to play it um, very competitively then you probably will lose a little bit of silver unless you penetrate every single round but it can be a lot of fun as well. So we're gonna head on now into the second gameplay and we'll talk about how I try to angle this tank up. So you're joining me here in the hard case on a great wall. I sped up the start of this game because it's just me very slowly getting into position. And now you're gonna see the brawling capabilities of the hard case in action and how much you can bounce off the sides of this tank. So I tried to get up to the position that that Indian Panzer and that Object 277 are in but I don't have any help and now I'm just going to try and defend this position whilst my teammates try and flank from the middle and through the north and hopefully I can hold on long enough to get through this situation. You can see that I've already started to load the heat because going through the turret of a 277 just won't happen with this 100 millimeter gun and I'm going to need every bit of assistance that I can in this situation because if they all rush me at once no matter how much space armor you have there's only so long um, that you can survive until someone finds or knows your weak spot already and you can see the kind of outnumbered situation that we're in 
and I'm just going to try and stop the enemies getting around the sides of me and I'm going to try and uh, utilise the uh, tank destroyers and the artillery that are sat in E1. So you'll see me turning my tank to the side whenever it, someone is firing at me and that is just to catch the shells in the spaced armour. When I'm angling off of a corner I prefer to reverse side scrape because then you don't give them the uh, front left and front right pikes of your um, pike nose on this T10 hole and if they do have a chance to shoot the rear of your tank you have spaced armor protection over it for HG and heat uh, rounds as well. You can see here that I'm just over angling only giving them the side and spaced armor to shoot at making the front drive wheel a very hard shot and I'm trying to keep my turret around um, or my spaced armor on my turret always angled towards my opponents and I'm just trying to make sure I make every um, every shot count as um, I get the object 277 ram himself on me giving me a little bit of damage which is very nice but you can see here that I'm reverse side scraping against this WZ113 GFT which is a tier 10 uh, Chinese tank destroyer with very good penetration rounds and he's already bounced two off me and it's just hilarious the kind of things that you can get away with in this tank. Um, I'm trying just to wiggle, move backwards and forwards, make my weak points hard to hit and I'm just trying to get as many shots through them as possible. I know that there's a lot of heat spam in this game but in this kind of situation if I wanted to be ultra competitive and get through it I feel like um, I just have to load the heat basically. If I had standard rounds I might be bouncing all these showers, I might be holding the tanks off but I wouldn't be getting too much damage in um, and uh, I would have to take longer to aim for weak spots and exposing my weak points uh, stationary for longer so it's all about keeping on moving, keeping on giving your opponents your side armour, your spaced armour, the spaced armour on the turret and uh, trying to make your capoeiras hard to hit, the front drive wheel hard to hit and trying to um, make the back of your turret um, hard to hit as well by keeping your turret aimed at your opponents at all times. So that was a very quick little brawl there but it was very effective. We finished with a high caliber, a sniper medal and a steel wall unsurprisingly in the hard case with 1653 base experience, 4.9k direct damage, 374 assistance, 2 kills and 6.2k blocked and if we were in that position for a lot longer we still had 700 odd hit points left we could have bounced a lot more but we had a very good influence in that battle holding off multiple tanks and that shows you the power of the hard case so that's it for the second gameplay i'm going to get on into the third and final gameplay so you're joining me here on sunset coast in the hard case whilst i'm getting into position you can see that it is very slow so while i'm going over the open ground if i am detected i will immediately try and turn as close to a 90 degree angle as possible of course depending on your um, intended location that's not always possible but I always try and drive in sort of 90 degree angles so I'm going sort of forward 90 degrees to the left forward and then I go around the battlefield like that going from sort of rock to hardcover to hardcover and making sure that my enemies only have the spaced armor to shoot at and if they want to penetrate me they're going to have to shoot that 120 millimeter bit of armor on my side which is sort of identified by uh, the log which is on the right side of this tank um, or they're going to have to try and hit my cupola or just kind of get lucky and land a shell on my engine deck or something like that so that's why you're seeing me drive sort of side on across gaps and i found that it's the most effective thing for this tank uh, so here on Sunset Coast I'm going to go to the central sort of area and uh, brawl with all the heavy tanks because that's what you're meant to do. Um, you're just going to find the nearest brawling location, get there, set up position and try and uh, either defend the location if you are a little bit outnumbered or you're going to try and push the tempo if you have uh, tanks supporting you. This is a fantastic tank for defensive positioning but also for um, pushing over open ground because you can draw the attention away from your friendly tanks whilst they try and flank around and whilst you are pushing forward you can sometimes get into a position where you can spot the enemy team out bounce loads of shells and get loads of assistance that way um, I'm making a slight mistake here in that I'm not reverse side scraping I'm giving these tanks a chance to shoot uh, the frontal hole and they are above me so they should penetrate with their penetration however I think it was my intention to move on fairly quickly once I've got rid of that type uh, for heavy because there are two artillery on the enemy team and that's one of the only things that can dig you out of a position 
I wanted to get forward into a little bit more cover with this rock or this big rock next to me so that it interrupts the show arc from artillery. But you can see here that I'm, whilst I'm moving forward, I'm not really scared about taking shots. I'm happy to take shots and try and bounce them for my team. More often than not, in this absolutely crazy tank, you will bounce shots even from extremely high penetration rounds, and it allows your teammates to poke out after they have fired and get a shot into you. This would be a great sort of platoon tank to play with. Uh, you take the shots, or your platoon mate takes the shots, and uh, yeah, the other platoon mate just pokes out and gets a shot in for free whilst. Uh, being uh, immune from any other fire. So um, you'll see here that I got tracked there, but I didn't instantly repair. That's something that I'm trying to kind of uh, practice a little bit more in all of my heavy tanks, but especially in the hard case, because the repair kit can become extremely um, valuable throughout the battle. And although obviously if you use a large repair kit, they do get uh, replenished after a certain amount of time, then um, it can come in handy because you can re sort of angle your armor up if you get tracked with your front drive wheel out like if this um, 1001p now tracked me um, went through my front drive wheel I would immediately sort of fall back behind it and then reverse side scrape out and not give him a shot into my drive wheel and it's just a good way to get around people that uh, do know your weak spots and people that do um, know where to shoot this tank and I think that's just uh, just the kind of gameplay of this tank you're going to have to be quite brave in this tank and take shots and not sit back it's pointless sort of sniping with this tank although the gun handling and the dpm with this commander and equipment setup isn't too bad at all um you're going to want to brawl in this tank see how much you can bounce this is a fantastic tank to uh do all of those block damage challenges in different ops and things like that and it's just an absolutely crazy kind of mean tank in terms of its armor it's ridiculous the amount of damage that you can block uh, and the influence that you can have I don't know what they were thinking when they thought of putting this tank in, but uh, I don't know what they were thinking in terms of the mercenary tech tree um, anyway, but yeah, that's for a different day. Um, I've got this tank and I just wanted to show people who may be struggling with this tank um, how to play it or maybe struggling to pen it, how to pen it as well. And it's also kind of funny just to watch everyone bounce off your side and reverse side scrape off of everything and people just don't know what to do when you reverse side scrape and it's a really fun thing to do. Um, yeah, because they don't have the pike nose to shoot at, they just have this side armor, they don't know to shoot for the cupola. You've got a really strong turret and it's absolutely hilarious. So in this game on Sunset Coast we are behind by one tank but uh, it's not over just yet. We just pulled one back and I still have a thousand hit points to play with. We've already blocked 10 shy of, well, make that 4.2k damage and we've already done 3.5k of our own damage and 642 um, assistants now those numbers are getting boosted up all the time you can see that we're fighting from the left side and the right side of this rock and that's where this reverse side scraping is fantastic because that t54 poked round and didn't get a shot into me very easily he's thinking he can just go through the side of my turret with that space armor he has the same gun as me if he's fully upgraded meaning that with the standard rounds he just won't go through at all and the heat rounds will get absorbed um, and you can absolutely bully tanks that come across you like tier 7s and quite a lot of tier 8s because they just won't have the penetration um, to go through you and it's an absolute bully. It is hilarious though to play uh, but very frustrating when you come up against it. I know when I uh, first started playing after the sort of mercenaries came out and the hard case came up then um, I was really annoyed coming up against this tank. It was so annoying to play against. I didn't know where to shoot it. I was shooting it flat in the side with you know tier 9, tier 10 tank destroyers that have fantastic penetration and bouncing it was just really annoying um, but yeah I learned to play it um, once I got it learned all the weak spots and now it is kind of hilarious so I'm just passing any information on to anyone that doesn't know I know a lot of people probably do but as this was earnable quite uh, well not too long ago I thought there'd be a few players out there that would come across this tank and think you know what the hell do I do against this tank I'm firing right into the side it's ridiculous but once you know the weak spots it isn't too hard to take out um, you've just got to be patient and if you play and it's all about uh, not giving your opponents any sort of easy penetrations, making your weak spots um, sort of always wiggling, making them hard to hit. And yeah, you should be golden and have a lot of fun. But we managed to sort of weather the storm um, in this game. It's just this SU-130 PM left and the enemy artillery. We've got him spotted out. Uh, we got a shot into him and we also bounced another shell. And now we're going to try and just finish this one off. Um, 
as you can see it's very moving uh, very slow moving over open ground but i'm just sat side on uh, waiting for him to poke back out and we get our final show into him i don't know why i was firing heat then i do have a tendency probably to load the heat for the heavy tanks and just not load uh, the ap back in um, I play this tank for fun, but you can play this more sensibly and uh, switch your ammunition a little bit more intelligently and then you wouldn't uh, lose uh, so much silver. But we get the final kill in that M40 and 43 and we end that game with a pretty impressive result for a tier 9 heavy tank where we finish with a top gun 6 kills in the MVP slot, 5.4k direct damage. We get the Master of Bounds, the Pascucci's medal in a slow lumbering heavy tank. Um, and we get a 1,458 base experience, base experience, 1,458 assistance, um, 5.4k direct damage, um, and yeah, we make a, a small loss of 40,000 silver. Some really good experience, but an all-round pretty decent game, and it's just an absolutely crazy tank. A lot of fun, but very frustrating at the same time. So I hope you found this video informative and or enjoyable. Thank you all so much for your support, and until next time, I'll see you on the battlefield, and bye for now.